Hey, it's Don, the auction professor here. Today we've got another what sold on eBay. We're going to hop over there right now and just show you a few things that we sold in the past week. So here we go with the first item. I talk about coins and tokens and things along that line quite often. Most of these train related ones do have some value. Usually I can get them for 50 cents, maybe a dollar at most. This was a quarter purchase. I sold it for $13.99. No big deal. Quick turn. Next one here is a postcard. It's a real picture, real photo postcard from Pelston, Michigan. It's not a huge area, uh, not well collected, but I still sold this one for 20 bucks. A dollar or less I pay for any postcard pretty much. Next item here is a 78 Soul. It would basically be a doo-wop. The Eldorados, you should know, it's a very well-known group from the 50s. This one would date to like 57, maybe somewhere in that range. VJ actually did Beatles later on on 45s also. This one did sell for 27.50. It's an excellent condition version of this disc also. Next one here is a Bing Crosby, and it actually is tied with Disney, and Orson Welles is narrating in this one as well. It's a booklet, and this one here, I got around 35 bucks for it, so pretty happy with that. There's only two records in this set, so this is a better set. This one isn't that common, doesn't show up that often. And the next item here is a Mount Vernon State Hospital aid pin for the psychiatric ward. These don't show up very often, I would imagine. I took 40 out of it. It was up for about six, maybe seven months, so I have maybe 30 cents in the listing. It. This is something I bought in a big bulk lot. I probably have nothing invested into this piece at all other than that few cents in the listing. It. You can buy a big lot of these type of things, pins and stuff, at auction or, or at state sale, or even if you have to pay a dollar a piece, I still buy them at that point. So, Nice item here. Next one here, this one's been up for a year or so. I bought a huge lot of Star Trek books and stuff. There's actually a pop-up book that's not shown. This is one of the ones that was lost last year in June, and lost the images. I didn't go back and correct them, but the description of what's in the lot is included down below. It did go for 35 bucks. I have maybe a dollar twenty in the listing and at the very most. Nothing into the cost of the items because again, I sold some of the high dollar items out of the lot I purchased with these, immediately got my money back and actually made a profit then. So this is just gonna sit. Who cares if it sets for a long time? Now here's another poster. I've sold quite a few. I think I had one in the last couple videos. I sell one or two of these a week. I figured they'll be gone at this point probably by the end of the year. No big deal. I have, again, nothing into these. I purchased a whole lot of these for 50 cents or a dollar a piece, close to 100 of them, and I've been selling them uh, all the way up to 57.50 a piece. So I'm very happy with the return. I took 18 on this one. Nothing really graphic. Doesn't show a lot in the image as well either. Now the next one here is a card that I had a very similar one, but it wasn't from Cullum Candy. So if you watch a week or so's video ago, on my other what sold, you'll see the same basic card, but you'll see different advertising, a different company name. The other card didn't sell candy. This one here did go for 275 bucks. She was a suffragette, an abolitionist. She it was a very well distinguished person in her day. She was the first female surgeon during the Civil War when females weren't allowed to serve in that position. Well, well-known person, very scarce card, very happy with this. I had three of these, I do believe, and they've all sold for at least 175 to 275 a piece. Very good return on these, 275. Now here's a Scooby-Doo book. I paid a dollar for it. I sold it for 10 plus they paid postage. Can't go wrong on these. I'll always sell them. I don't care if they sit, say, for four or five months, which is about what this one sat up, because for four or five months, I've got like 20 cents, maybe 25 cents in the listing. It. These take maybe a minute, a minute and a half at the most to list. It's just a title and a quick description. Everything else in the listing when you're doing a listing should be the same, other than the description and the title of the item as well as the pictures. It's real quick to fix them up that way, in all honesty. Now the next one here is a Courier Knives card. I've sold probably maybe 17 of these, all in the same range. This one I believe went for 60 bucks. It's a scarcer image. It does have some issues like some trimming that looks like on the sides and maybe a little rough lift on the very top right top edge there. But, but other than that, it was a really nice card. 
Now, the next one here is a postcard that was shown in a haul maybe two or three weeks ago. I sold this one for 40 bucks, and I'm sure that I'll sell several others out of that lot for another 40, 50 bucks a piece. Kings Island are fairly scarce, some of these earlier ones. It's a large size card, it's been around for a while. Uh, you just can't find these much anymore. There wasn't many printed, from my understanding. Uh, and this is early, too. This is probably late 60s, early 70s. Probably the heyday of their time. Next one's another postcard. I believe I took 40 on this one. Rather interesting image. Nice all the way around. Good sale. Dollar or less is what I paid for it. Now, here's a pin. I bought this in a big bulk lot of buttons, believe it or not. This is a shirt-style pin you'd stick on your outfit. Stick pin. It's got an early date from the 1890s, or patent number, I should say. And this is Brownies, the Palmer Cox characters. Well sought after, even with the little wear that you see on the top on this one. I still took 50 bucks on this. There's no real price on some of these in this condition. It should have been shiny border, but the image is still technically there. It's a little off printed. They were cheaply done back then as well, so it's about what you would expect, I would say. 50 bucks, as I said. Now, next one here is from a haul. I showed a haul, and you can see me actually buying it. I paid five bucks for a whole bunch of these reel to reels. All told, I've sold probably 520 bucks worth. I still have about 15 or so of these left at this point. And I've already made, well, probably around 440, 430 bucks return on that $5 investment. This one I believe I got 45 on. Another one, 30 bucks on this one. Now the next one's a record. This is a Northern Soul. I would have sold this one probably for three or 400 had the label not been printed upside down. In a record standpoint, no one cares that the label is misprinted. The people are buying it for the music itself, and they have a nice copy of this disc. I took 155 on it just because of that issue. I talked to many people, and that was the determination that it was probably worth less than a standard copy just because the label is screwed up. So don't always think an error is going to be worth something. And I know my records fairly well, so I, I trust the judgment of the people I talk to, as well as my knowledge on taking that low of an offer on this one here. This is a quarter purchase, so either way, I'm coming back with a 155 bucks sale on this item here. Now here's a 8mm film. These are very common. This is a Max Senate one, so it's not worth much. It did sell for $12.50. I have nothing into this whatsoever other than maybe $0.20 cents in the listing. It Because I bought a huge lot of these, and I've already made a ton of money off of just one motion picture that I sold out of this lot. I got all my money back and turned a profit on the first one. I buy these all the time. I don't care you know, what type of movie they are. Usually if it's eight millimeter, you're safe. The bigger, the better it is on the real size. This isn't the small size. This is a 400 foot that's about yay big, about the size of a record, a 45 dip. So about seven inches tall in overall size. Now the next one is a bottle label from Grapeette. This is a home version of the beverage company. It's from Ashland, Wisconsin. It did sell for $17.50. I actually have quite a few of this exact label. So you'll see another one of these up and another one of these up. That's the play. I don't list more than one at a time. You don't want to flood or challenge your own market. Let it ride like it's a rare piece and let it go until it sells. Most of these, again, I know my stuff, so these have all been looked up. I've sold many of these brand labels from A&B Beverage. This is a home package that you'd mix up at the house. Next one here is a C.S. Forrester, Captain Horatio Hornblower. This is a really good book series if you haven't read it. Or there's an A&E series, I believe, or maybe it's PBS, of Horatio Hornblower. It's, I think, a five-part series. I've seen them all. You can get it from the library. It's probably on Amazon if you haven't seen it before. But that last version of this, that I, again, believe it was PBS or A&E, is probably the best version of this converted into a movie or a uh, video production. It's the bomb. If you like that sort of thing, it reminds me of Master and Command, if you know what that movie is. Master and Command's on one of my great lists of must-watch movies. So this one did go for $34.50, even with the box issues. It's an early copy, early editions, 1939. Uh, let's move on from there. More of the reel-to-reels. I have no idea what this sounds like. I, I didn't play it. Guy didn't really care. He was buying it for a chance. 
I let him have it for 25 bucks. I looked in and found more information on the company prior to listing it. And as I always say, I list much higher than I expect to get it. I listed three times. I took 25 on three of these pretty much same basic principle. They're just organ music, nothing else on these from what it looks like. 25 again and 25 again. Again, I paid five for all of those that you've just seen, plus dozens and dozens more. Now, this was shown in a hall uh, maybe six months ago, maybe less than that even. This is a cleaner for piano rolls. It's got an instrument that would blow off, I guess, the inside workings of them. This did go for $29.99, and I paid a dollar for this. It was in with player piano rolls, so they just must assume that's all that was in there. They didn't open the box. I got it for a dollar. These always sell. This one's immaculate, wood handle, nice uh, cylinder, no wear or tear anything on it. It looks like it wasn't used. Next one here are some Imaginex. This is the Castle Set, Wizard, Dragons, the whole works. I sold this for 75 bucks. This was up for a year. And I believe I showed this one in a haul here. Uh, we've got maybe $2.99. I think this came from a Goodwill, believe it or not. Really dirt cheap. It was in a bag, a bunch of junk. I separated it and just sold this stuff separately. So anyway, and they paid for shipping too. Let's move on. More reel-to-reels. This one I took 45 on. 45 on this one as well. I've showed this one too when it was picked. Here is a Edison disc. Again, I sell records constantly, so this one went for 40 bucks on this one here. I'm not going to try and pronounce it. Um, I give up on the pronunciation on a few of these. This is a rarer disc. If you know your Edisons, you'll know which ones to look for, or if you know how to look them up, of course. I paid a dollar or less again for this disc here. And the last couple items came from a collector of grinders. He collected grinders. It was an estate sale, in all honesty. So he had a bunch of advertising cards for grinders, and he had the grinders that went with this. Everybody grabbed up the grinders, the supplies, and all that kind of stuff. I nabbed the paper items really quickly. I only paid $2 a piece for the cards that I purchased there. And I sold this one for 40 bucks to one person. And I sold the next one to another buyer for 90 bucks. Now, the sale I got these at, I was fairly close to the beginning of it. There were some people, though, that spent the night at this sale, it looked like. They were there for hours, from what I, I heard from other people that were in line. And uh, people will do that at sales. So I won't do that. I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to give up my night. There's plenty of stuff to get. I'm not worried about a specific... Maybe they're collectors. I don't know. But the point of the matter is that the instrument, the actual force pump was there, and I could have got it if I showed up real early. So with the $4 I have invested in just these two cards, I'm walking out with $130 in sales. So profit-wise, I made over 100 bucks, And I also have several more of these same similar style cards, too. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.